Hello and welcome back to the channel. For the past two years I've given my brother a miniature for Christmas. Here's Jacob Bugmanson who I gave to him two years ago and uh, here's Bastian Carthlos who I gave to him last year. Uh, this year I had a choice between what I was calling Jack Santa and the opposite of that uh, we've got a little bit of creepy Krampus. But ultimately I decided to go with what I had laying around the house which was uh, this Grobin Draw. Grobin? Grobin? Hmm. Grombin Draw? <laughs> the White Dwarf model. Uh, he was pretty quick to put together. Here he is in a, a nice little detail shot. Very simple. And then I had this cheese box that I had broken and uh, I really liked the texture to it so I figured that could be a good base. You know I pulled, pulled the nails out out of it and started to uh, play around with some of the other miniatures I had laying around the house. Ultimately I remembered that I had this uh, sweet looking hill giant. So I figured he'd work great. And here he is with uh, a, a few modifications. What I did was add a bunch of Stormcast shields to his body to give him a, an armored appearance. So it wasn't just the standard run-of-the-mill 3D kit, uh, or print I should say. And I also had some chains from one of my brother's old toys that was this McFarlane gorilla, like a Cybernex gorilla. Uh, and my son had been playing with it and I decided that the chains were too dangerous for the toy so I would uh, you know, probably figure out a way to repurpose them later and it wasn't long after doing that that I realized they would be perfect for this project so here you see me kind of clipping them figuring out where they should go and uh, overall I think it looks really great one of the things I'm really excited about was how I used this plastic card from a, uh, a nice t-shirt that I got or actually it was a dress shirt and I cut that to fit along the back so it looks like a nice strap of this uh, leather material which you know would be used to hold the, the armor in place across his back and I'm just trimming that up to make sure it's like a really nice and snug fit and I'm going to glue it against the uh, the back underneath each of the individual shields with some super glue and uh, that's that's pretty much it I also did this to the straps that go across the the arm, his left arm, where that shield sleeve is, uh, that, that was a little bit more finicky. I had to do two thin pieces of plastic straps. You can kind of see me figuring that out right here. Uh, and then on top of that, I also wrapped additional chain around that side. And here's what he looked like when he was finished. I hit him with a couple layers of spray paint, dark purple, dark blue, and then a white over top. And uh, here he is on top of the base. Um, I've got a couple different tree options that I'm passing. Oh, let's just pick that right up again. Okay, here we go. Everything's very finicky. But yeah, this was essentially how I went about figuring out how everything should work. I next wrapped the base in a green painter's tape. It's called frog tape. And then I set about covering the entire top with uh, Vallejo's Earth Texture Acrylic. This is actually the black lava asphalt version. I figured that if I painted this, the texture was pretty good enough to snow where if I spray painted that white, you know, it was, it would be believable as snow. And I wasn't wrong. <laughs> and uh, yeah, after getting this peeled, I wish I had a better shot of me like slow peeling it here. Like it's just not the best framing. And then in true newbie editing fashion, I uh, did not really get the, the placement of these next two shots in frame so you see me here messing around with a couple of the different tree variants that I had for the model and uh, figuring out the placement for the giant now I did end up going with this snowy tree and then spray painting over that after I did the base as well I actually ended up doing two coats of spray paint blue and then white and that gave it a really nice cool effect just a quick shot of the diorama in progress and then I decided to take a break, watch some jingle all the way, and figured that I could probably get this battlefield snow effect on here while I watched Arnold Schwarzenegger run around and trying to find a Turbo Man. So uh, here I am using some watered down PVA glue and using an old brush to strategically put the glue where I want the snow to fall to make sure and making sure it doesn't run anywhere I don't necessarily want it to go. The next step was to then use this little spoon to sort of dust where the PVA glue was lying and see how the effect looked. Uh, it, was, it was pretty good. I liked that a lot. I liked this Battlefield Snow from Army Painter. And then the next step was to paint Grombrindal, the white dwarf. I knew I wanted him to look pretty icy, 
uh, his skin I wanted to maybe look a bit more transparent or frostbitten or almost have the appearance that it is very frigid and cold perhaps even on the uh, verge of being gangrenous uh, ultimately I warmed him up a little bit and I really focused on his beard I wanted it to be that really like nice white beard you see in the uh, photos but with a little bit of a blue shading shadowing in the recesses because there's a lot of dark blue throughout the other pieces of the miniature and it really ties it all together to have it in the, the characters as well. You'll see here in a second I've got a few different progress shots of where he started and how he ended up and in a brief moment here I'll, I'll start to show you what the final piece looked like and uh, I hope you like it. Thank you again for watching. Merry Christmas, Drew.